989 So here's a couple things. The setup time, uh, it can be faster if you have a consistent way to set up, a consistent location, same rifle, bipod height, all that. You could probably get it down. But with this one, because you're shooting over something and it's in front of you, you gotta be careful about distance. Now I'm just shooting a rimfire right now, so it's not too bad. But even with rimfire, it does blow some powder down there. So you don't wanna be overly close because you'll cover the sensors themselves with the uh, you know unburned gunpowder. Um, one more thing you got to worry about I suppose with this one I feel a little bit more comfortable to set it up quickly you know in the snow there's always something to work around that is a little bit more complicated uh, what else you know you got to have a good tripod something you can weight down I have a, a tripod out there it's just an Amazon tripod but it has a bag on it so that I can or a platform so I can load it down with weight if it's too windy you don't want to get knocked over or moving and missing shots I've actually never had um, let me think about this. I've never had an error message on this unit yet. I'm using cloudy, kind of overcast skies right now. Not a lot of sun breaking through, but definitely cloudy, even light. That's kind of the conditions I've been shooting in, and I've just had really good success as far as reads go. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't think I've had any distance issues, proximity issues at all, but I did read the owner's manual, and that matters. So I'm going to recommend that to you guys. Read your owner's manual because it's going to tell you some things, especially if you get the Bluetooth model, which is what I have here, the DLX. If you don't read the owner's manual, you'll probably have some issues or questions figuring it out. It was good for me. It helped me solidify the process of how I'm going to make it connect to different um, tablets, phones, computers. It was slightly different depending on what kind of software I was running. So anyways, with that much said, I'm going to go ahead and throw 10 down here just at 50 yards and I'll use this and we'll see what kind of reads we get for uh, numbers. 1192 11.77 11.83 11.89 1196 1180 1191 there you go there's time let's take a peek real quick so the extreme spread was 19 on that and uh you know what this really wasn't that bad of a shot string for 10 shots in the cold just using federal auto match all right that's bolt box stuff guys the uh, extreme spread was 19 but the standard deviation was only six for 10 shots. That's really not that bad. I'm, I'm quite happy with that. Uh, at a temperature of 31 degrees, this is saying right here, and a little bit of wind. Average of all the shots was 1188. That's what I was getting out of this 20 inch CZ457. Pretty happy with that. That's why I've been using this ammo for NRL instead of paying the big bucks to buy um, SK Standard Plus. I get generally better numbers with SK Standard Plus 
on, on like if I was to do 100 shots, yeah, I'd get better numbers for sure with the SK. It is very, very precise ammo. But as far as NRL 22 stages go, I actually do just fine with this, and I'm okay paying the prices of a few cents around versus 25 cents around. I don't get anything. I don't win these competitions, uh, especially in open class. I'm not. And I can deal with a standard deviation of six. That's pretty good in the winter time. Temperature sensitivity isn't the worst right now, uh, apparently, for this ammo. All right, I got my 16-inch CZ out. So some of the differences here could make a slight difference more so in uh, downrange results. But I do have a bigger bipod on here. The rifle weighs slightly less, though, overall. And I have more magnification. So for target size and for group size, that might make a little bit of a difference. But for velocity, oh yeah, and I have a different stock on here, that's true. Um, barrel is still under a thousand rounds on the 16 inch. That probably does minorly affect, affect uh, velocity, but I think we're going to get reasonable readings, things that you could probably predict or trust to have similar results with yours between a 16 inch or 20 inch if you're just trying to make that decision. Um, I'll tell you, in the first thousand rounds of both, both are like equally precise and uh, easy to be accurate with. I'm getting similar group sizes. I can't really see a difference. I know the shorter barrel is you know, supposedly stiffer, but that 20 inch barrel is pretty thick too. Anyways, just a couple thoughts. We'll see what I get for, for uh, velocities here out of a 10 shot string. I do wear ears when I shoot my 16 inch because it's just a little snappy. And I guess nowadays I care about my hearing a lot more than I used to. Okay, 10 shots. Sure, I'm behind the chronograph. And you can follow along on that screen. Eleven fifty two. Eleven thirty eight. Eleven eighty seven. Eleven eighty eight. Eleven eighty. Eleven seventy nine. Eleven eighty seven. Eleven eighty one. Eleven twelve. Wow. Eleven sixty four. Man, that was a big extreme spread on that one. What do we get? There was a couple bad shots in there, guys. Seventy six, seventy six feet for extreme spread. That's. That's super irregular for this rifle and the ammo. I'm going to tell you that that was just a really bad one. But I do trust the numbers. I think I've set up well. I don't see any reason to not trust it. I think I just got some really bad rounds in there. Standard deviation of 24. So that's terrible comparatively. I've seen 10 or 12. I just doubled it. So I don't know. I'm going to look at that shot list real quick. And, jeez, I don't know. That's really bad. So it's average of 1166. Um, you know, the one in there that I'm suspicious of, there's one that was at 1112. So 1112 feet per second is exceptionally low. I don't know if, I'll have to go listen to the, to the audio. I don't know if it went kind of slow and you can usually tell by the, the way it sounds and sometimes the feel of the recoil. If I was just to take that one out, okay guys, that one, out. Let's just take it out. Say that say that you thought it was a bad read. I take that shot out, and now my now my standard deviation is down to 17. Extreme spread of 50. So that one shot did cut down on it quite a bit. 
but I don't know for my own numbers if it were me I would do probably 20 shots and get a, a read on 20 shots instead of 10 shots and then take out a couple of the real extreme spread numbers for my own data if I'm gonna zero the rifle or I want to know uh, what I'm putting into a Kestrel or ballistic calculator of some sort I definitely would take out the extremes and I would go with just the the primary numbers that are reasonable and you can sh it'll show you on some graphs here there are graphs and these graphs will show you kind of what's way up there or way down there and you can make some decisions based off that it's up to you how you want to run it it's just the way that I do it all right so there it is that is the pro chrono it's the DLX model the Bluetooth so it communicates with your devices your phones you can save your data and back it up on there I like it quite a bit I'm gonna really, really like try to break it down to simple man terms here. For $119, that's what I paid for it. I've seen it a little cheaper and I've seen it for more. For $119, it has more to offer than the other ones do. I don't feel good about the Caldwell version. I've seen a lot of failures with that on the range first person. I've seen a lot of success with the model I have. The lab radar is really cool, but I think guys like me, average guys, you probably don't need to use it. I think this is gonna cover all the bases for information you need. I think it's reliable. Um, yeah, you got to set it up, take some time to set it up. The lab radar is a little different. You don't have to worry about shooting it, hopefully. Uh, maybe muzzle brake, concussion, but you don't have to worry about that. This one has a downfall of being battery operated. Ugh, come on, guys. Pro Chrono, what are you doing? This thing, I mean, it's, it's so good. It's so close. Guys, it's so close to being exactly what I needed. But the battery thing kind of sucks. Look at where I'm at right now. It's cold outside and those batteries die quick. And so that's one downfall, but when it comes to summer, I don't mind. And quite frankly, I'll buy the nine volt batteries as long as I can find them. I'll buy the nine volt batteries and I'll never spend as much money as the lab radar would cost me. I've got some friends who use the lab radar. They're having really great results with it. Occasionally some issues, especially for switching between um, little bigger bullets and smaller bullets and then uh, going to pellets and BBs even or something like that. It seems like there might be a little bit of an issue with that. Uh, it's really finicky. With this one, honestly, it is stupid simple, guys. It's not that hard. When I switch between any caliber, as long as I'm an appropriate distance away, and I'm not shooting right at it. You know, I have my targets behind me out there. As long as I'm lined up, it's, it's good, good to go. For 119 bucks, I guess that's my, my whole point. I feel like this is the most price efficient that you can get. I don't have any problems with it. I've shot center fire, pistol, pellet rifles, subsonics, supersonics. I've shot kind of everything I have over it to grab numbers and it's been very successful for me. Um, that's the only results that I can give you. It's, a, it's you know, an example of one person and their experience with this but I like it and I'm going to tell you if you don't have the money for that lab radar or you just don't think you would use the lab radar you know like every time for five six hundred bucks if you're not going to use it every time stick with this one I think it's a good product this isn't a sponsored review it's just my own uh, purchase that I made if you want to see some other stuff uh, that was a sponsored review but I still like it and I actually stand behind it the two optics that I had in this video the Arkin optics I have a 4 to 16 and a 6 to 24 from Arkin and those are the Gen 2 SH4s. Uh, those are phenomenal optics. I love them. I've been shooting them a lot, shooting crazy tiny little groups with them. Glass quality and turrets are great. Construction quality is great. No issues with those. Go ahead and check out those reviews right here or here. Thanks, guys.